All right, guys, this is our last video lesson for this semester. And we're going to talk about similar salads and an application of that, which is called frescum. So re remember that when we did similar triangles, um, we had triangles that were the same shape but different sizes. So kind of the same idea, similar solids have the same shape and all of their corresponding dimensions are proportional. So the ratio of corresponding linear dimensions, and I want to underline linear dimensions. So that means like a side length or the radius. We're not talking about circumference or anything like that. So if their corresponding linear dimensions um, have the same similarity ratio, then we know they're similar solids. Okay, so that's why any two cubes are similar and any two spheres are going to be similar. All right, so we're going to just look at these sets of solids and decide if they're similar. And if so, we're going to compare their volumes. Okay, so all we're going to do is look at their corresponding linear side. So 5 is going to match up with 3. So let's make a ratio out of that. We're going to see if that's equal to this 5 and over that 3. Obviously, that is. And then we have 8 over 6. So 8 over 6, let's reduce that. We reduce that by 2. Then we're going to get 4 over 3. So we can see that these two are equal, but this one's not. So these would not be similar solids. Okay, let's do the same thing over here with the prisms. All right, so I'm going to match up 10 with 5. So I'll make that into a ratio. And we're going to see if that's the same ratio as 6 over 3, and then 14 over 7. I'm sure you guys can see it already, but let's reduce all of those. So 10 over 5 reduces to 2, this reduces to 2, and this reduces to 2. So they all equal the same ratio, so they are similar. So now let's find the volume. So the volume for our prism will be very simple. We can just do length times width times height. So that would be 10 times 6, which is 60, and 60 times 14, which is 840. And then over here, we're going to have 5 times 3, which is 15, times 7, which is 105. So now let's compare the volumes here. So I'm going to have 840 compared to 105. And if I reduce that, fraction, I'm going to get a value of 8. And you see how that's not the same ratio as their linear measurements. So, But there is a relationship between the 2 and the 8, and that's what we're going to talk about next. All right, so let's do the same thing for these cones. And this is what I was talking about with linear measurements that I want you to be very careful about. So a radius is a linear measurement, so I can do 3 over 5. And a height is a linear measurement, so we're going to see if that's equal to 4 over 10. So 3 over 5 does not reduce. 4 over 10 reduces to 2 fifths, and these are not. So these are not similar cones. All right, so then. In this one, careful here, this 5 is pointing to the diameter, so the radius is 2.5. So I would do 2.5 over 5, and we're going to see if that's equal to our height, 7.5 over 15. So you can see each of these are a half. They would reduce to a half. So these are similar. And again, let's do... Now this one doesn't want us to do the volume. So now let's talk about what's happening here with our ratios. Okay, so here are two prisms. Let me move this down. Here are two prisms, and we've got all of their, we've got their side lengths have a ratio of 1 to 2. So this prism, like this side, 4, is twice as large as the 2. And then the ratio of the surface area, so let's look at their surface areas. Okay, so this one is four times as big. So we've got a ratio of one to two, and we've got a ratio of one to four, and then the volumes, this one's eight times as big. So we have a ratio of one to eight. So what is the relationship between the original 
a, a linear relationship, the surface area relationship, and the volume re relationship. Well, you can see that if I do 1 to 2 and I square it, then that would give me 1 to 4. And then if I do 1 to 2 cubed, that would give me 1 to 8. All right, so let's write that as a summary for our notes. Okay, so if we have a similarity ratio and it's just A to B, so whatever that happens to be, in our last example it was 1 to 2, the corresponding areas is going to be in the ratio of A squared to B squared. So think surface area, you're using square units, so your ratio is going to be squared. And then the ratio of your volumes is going to be um, A cubed to B cubed. So here's how we can use that. We have these two similar cylinders, and we have a scale factor of 2 to 5. So this is like our A to B. They want us to find the surface area and volume of surface of cylinder B, given that the surface area of cylinder A is 96 pi. Okay, and then we also are going to find the volume, knowing that the volume of cylinder A is 128 pi. Okay, so if I set up this ratio, this is 2 to 5. So if I'm talking about surface area, then I want to make sure I square that, each of those. So I have A squared and B squared. So I'm going to use the ratio of 4 to 25. And how do I use a ratio? We set up a proportion. So I'm going to set 4 over 25. That's cylinder A over cylinder B. And we're talking about the surface areas now. So I'm going to use the surface area of cylinder A, which is 96 pi. And then this is what we're trying to find, the surface area of uh, cylinder B. So we just cross multiply. This gives me 225 pi. And I'm going to divide by 4. So yeah, I would just keep this as 225 pi over 4. That would be my, uh, does it say square? Yeah, square feet. It's going to be square feet for the surface area of cylinder B. So now let's do the, surf the volume of cylinder B. Now for volume, we're going to take this two-fifths and we're going to cube each of them. So the ratio for the volumes is going to be 8 to 125. So that's the proportion I'm going to set up for volume. So I have 8 over 25. That's the volume of cylinder A compared to the volume of cylinder B. The volume of cylinder A is 128 pi, so now we're going to solve this. So we're going to have 8x, 125 times 128 is 16,000 pi. And we're going to divide that by 8 which will give us 2,000 pi. So, and this is uh, cubic feet. Okay, so all I need you to remember is make sure you're doing the correct ratio, whether you're doing a linear measurement, a surface area, or a volume. All right, so let's look at another one down here. Here are two cones are similar and they want us to find just the scale factor. But notice what they've given us. They've given us the volumes. So if we use the volumes to write a ratio, notice that the pi's would cancel out in my ratio. And I'm going to reduce the 108 over 256 and that equals 27 over 64. Keep in mind that this is the A cubed over B cubed. We're trying to find the scale factor, so we want to know what is the A to B ratio. So I just have to take the cubed root of each of these in order to find A and B. So the cubed root of 27 is 3, and then the cubed root of 64 is 4. So that would be our scale factor. So those radii would be in a proportion of 3 to 4. All right, so now let's use that idea to explore what we call frustums. 
So frustums are these shapes where we take either a cone or a pyramid and slice off the top of them. Now, keep in mind that we're talking about regular pyramids and cones, okay? So I'm not talking about some weird kind of pyramid. Um, but when I do that, let's say I have this square pyramid over here on the top. If I chop off the top of that cone, no matter where I chop that off, this will also be a square. All right, so these will be um, similar to each other, those bases. And so therefore, their cones, like this top cone versus the large cone, so this cone right here, I'm sorry, pyramid, not, not cone. That pyramid at the very top would be similar to this large one that we originally started with. So we're going to use that idea to help us find surface area. And this is actually on your worksheet if you'd like to use your worksheet to take notes on this part. So here is a frestum <clears throat> of a regular pyramid and we're going to find its lateral area. Okay, so basically what we want to do For this one, since we're just finding lateral area, we're just worrying about the sides and not the bases. So I don't have to worry about this square and this square base down here. Okay, so what shape are these sides of the frustum? So they're, in a pyramid, we know that our lateral faces are all triangles. But here, what shape is that? That is a trapezoid. All right, so when we do this, we're basically just finding the area of a trapezoid. So area of a trap, and again, this is for lateral surface area. So area of a trapezoid is one half the height times base one plus base two. Okay, so if I look at this, remember this is a square, so these are each going to be two, and then down here, these will each be four. And when it labeling this four, it's talking about this lateral edge here. Okay, so which pieces are we gonna actually use? So let's draw out what one face looks like. So the bottom edge is gonna be our four. Our top edge, our top base is gonna be two. So this is base one, base two. And our height is that perpendicular height, the perpendicular height between the two bases, which they're labeling as three. So we have everything we need in order to find the area of one single trapezoid. So we're just gonna do one half times three times six. So that's going to be nine nine square yards. And since we have four faces, this is a uh, square pyramid, so we're gonna have four lateral faces. So we're gonna do nine times four, which is gonna give me 36 square yards. Okay, so that one was pretty easy. We could just break it up. We didn't really have to do anything about similar pyramids or anything like that. So now let's look at this cone. The difference with a cone is I, I don't have faces, do I? I don't have like polygons that I can take the area of. So here's where we're going to use the idea of similar cones to help us solve this. So imagine what this cone looked like before I chopped off the top. Okay, so if I imagine that, then let's, let's think about these two cones. I have a smaller cone on top and a larger cone for the whole thing. <clears throat> so the smaller cone is, has a radius of three, and we don't know the height or anything. We just, we just know that, that the radius is three there, and that the radius on the larger one is six. Now we know these are gonna be similar, so we can, we can figure out the scale factor. So this top to bottom, so top to the large cone is going to be 3 over 6, which is 1 half. So every linear measurement here is going to be 1 half of the whole thing. Okay, so <clears throat> if I'm finding the surface area of a cone, let's think about what we need. All right, we're going to need the 
we're going to need this lateral area, right? And then we're going to add the two circles for our bases. So it's like I need the lateral area of the frustum plus the two um, circles for the bases to find the surface area. Okay, so I'm particularly talking about the lateral surface area. If I were to take this large lateral area of this cone and subtract this one, so I'm going to be doing big cone minus the small cone of the lateral area, that'll give me the lateral area of the frust. Does that make sense? So it's like I'm taking the big thing and chopping off the small lateral area. That'll give me what's left over on the frustum. Okay, so let's just figure out what lateral area is. So lateral area of a cone is simply pi r l. Pi r l. Remember, l is slant height. So what we really care about is the radius in each of these cones and then the slant height. All right, so think about this. If this is one half, okay, so this part is one half. Whatever this is, this lateral area, it has to be one half of the whole thing. All right, so if, if you can see it right away, you could see that it would be 9, so that the whole thing would be 18. But if you're not seeing that, think of eight, x plus 9, or x has to be half of x plus 9, or 2x has to be equal to x plus 9. So if I subtract x, I could see that x is equal to 9. So I know that this slant height is 9, and this slant height would be a total of 18. So when we're finding the lateral area of this small cone, that's going to be pi times 3 times 9. So that's 27 pi. And if I do the lateral area of the larger cone, that's going to be pi times 6 times 18, which is going to be 6 times 18 is 108 pi. And we said if we subtract those lateral areas, that'll give us the lateral area of the frustum. So the lateral area of the frustum, I'm going to put F for frustum, is going to be 108 pi minus 27 pi. So here that would be 108 minus 27 equals 81 pi. All right, so what did we say we were going to do? We were going to take the lateral area of the frustum and then add on the two bases. So I'm going to take my, so my surface area of this frustum is going to be my 81 pi. And then I'm going to add on the area of this small circle, which will be pi r squared, pi 3 squared. And I'm going to add on the area of this bottom base, or the, yeah, the surface area, not the area. 6 squared. So that will be 81 pi plus 9 pi plus 36 pi. Add them all together. And you get 126 pi. So that's our surface area of a frustum. So all we did, that's millimeters squared. All we did was use these similar cones, okay, set up a ratio so that we could find our missing piece that we needed. And then we added, or we subtracted those from each other to get the leftover of the frustum. Right. So we'll, we'll do more on that back part of the sheet in class, and uh, we'll do some more practice with similar solids in class as well.